Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at the recently released Oddworld Soulstorm and see how it compares both from a visual and gameplay perspective to the previous entry to the series, Oddworld New and Tasty. Now, for those of you not as familiar with this series, Oddworld is a stealth action platformer with some heavy puzzle elements that first debuted on the original PlayStation in 1997. The game tasks players with guiding the goofy but lovable Abe through a deadly meat processing plant as they attempt to save all their friends from being turned into the factory's next delicious snack. It's a highly original idea and one that is still loads of fun to play, though it's understandably seen better days. That's why in 2014, a British development studio called Just Add Water put together a complete remake of the original game, built from the ground up using the Unity engine to deliver enhanced lighting, higher resolution textures, and some changes to the controls to make the gameplay tighter. Fast forward to today, and we have yet another remake of Abe's classic adventure, Oddworld Soulstorm. Only this time, instead of being a near one-to-one -one remake of 1998's Abe's Exodus, this latest entry is more of a total reimagining of the original storyline, with entirely new environments, gameplay mechanics, and of course, much nicer visuals. So for this analysis, we're going to take a look at how the core development team, Oddworld Inhabitants, have improved on the visual design put in place with New and Tasty, while also pointing out unique features and gameplay changes that you can expect if you decide to try out this new entry. Also, for reference, both games are being played on the PC, with their settings cranked up as high as possible at a native 4K resolution. Alright, so let's kick this comparison off by first briefly going over the changes that have been made to the visuals, starting with the design of the character models. So right away, there's a number of pretty distinct changes that have been made to our hero Abe here. The biggest, and most apparent change, is most definitely the general complexity and overall poly count used in the model itself. Abe, even in the game's pre-rendered cinematics, looks incredibly lifelike when stacked up against his 2014 counterpart, with much higher fidelity texture maps, more advanced shaders, some subsurface scattering implementation, and just more advanced animation work overall. It's remarkable seeing these characters in action, as it feels like you're watching some sort of Pixar film, a really dark and twisted Pixar film. I think the aspect of the character design that helps to deliver this feeling the best are the eyes. In New and Tasty, Abe's eyes just feel like big orange orbs with a red, uneven sun iris surrounding a large pupil. These eyes appear to be reflecting light, but it's instead just two glowing white specks being applied, with no hint of any light truly being reflected. But in Soulstorm, the eyes look incredible. Whenever he gets surprised or worried, you can see his pupils dilate realistically, and the way his eyelids stretch out just oozes personality, and fits in perfectly with the game's art style. Just every inch of this character is more impressive, with various tendons and muscle fibers along his arms and legs being partially visible through his semi-translucent skin. And other details like his iconic laces look like they're actually deeply ingrained into his lower and upper lips, as opposed to looking like it's just taped on like in New and Tasty. When looking at the in-game model, a lot of these changes are still surprisingly visible. Abe's skin still appears rough and textured, with no visible seams connecting limbs like you see here with New and Tasty. Additionally, Abe is now sporting a backpack in Soulstorm, something that, as I'll explain later, serves a crucial role in the game's new mechanics. These changes, of course, can also be observed with every other character in the game as well, especially with the main antagonist, who not only has far more depth and complexity to his design, but also sports a few aesthetic changes as well, most notably a new round red eye instead of the original slits from before, and some painful looking scars that seem to be a result of Abe's actions in the original game. Moving on, let's take a look at how the environments have changed. Despite still taking place on the same planet and within the same general vicinity, Oddworld Soulstorm feels remarkably different from the environmental design in New and Tasty. One of its biggest improvements is to the three-dimensionality of the level designs, with long, rounded pathways smoothly rotating the camera now, adding a really unique perspective to each area in the game. New and Tasty, on the other hand, is based heavily around its 97 source material, each area is locked more or less to a 2D space, with three-dimensional backdrops helping to add more complexity to each scene. I think it still holds up remarkably well, despite some ugly texture work here and there, as there's always something interesting to see in the background, like soldiers patrolling on distant platforms or assembly lines processing various alien meats. But Soulstorm takes this idea and runs with it, with much longer draw distances allowing the developers to really cram in a ton of detail. The canyons are beautifully decorated, with lots of vegetation and unique cliff faces funneling the player's attention to an ultimate goal. And clever new environments like this speeding train assist Soulstorm in achieving that nice polished look. 
However, all that being said, I do feel Soulstorm does struggle to find its footing at times. A lot of areas in the game, especially early on, just feel like a disjointed mess of blocky maze-like structures, rather than a real place like in the classic Oddworld games. This is of course all done for the sake of making the gameplay more interesting, which for this particular genre of game is perfectly understandable, but I do feel as though the environments come off feeling a bit drab and empty in the first half of the game, which is disappointing considering how beautiful and unique the Oddworld universe is. And I think a big part of this has to do with the way the lighting was handled. This is where I think New and Tasty succeeds the most. The lighting design in the Abe's Odyssey remake, while not nearly as advanced as the lighting we normally see in games today, looks fantastic still, with some really striking compositions for different level environments giving each area a distinctive mood. The bright red and orange silhouetted exterior of the factory slowly fading into a darker blue really gives the player the idea that they're traveling further away from the factory's light pollution, which works perfectly in tandem with the game's pacing, giving the player a chance to breathe after the big escape. But Soulstorm's lighting feels a little bit more consistent throughout. The whole game just flows from one brown and gray area to another, with the only exception being some really pretty looking vistas when arriving in this canyon area. It just doesn't deliver the same striking imagery we saw with New and Tasty, which is really surprising considering the 98 game that Soulstorm is based on had some really cool tropical looking backdrops early on. However, Soulstorm does catch a break in this area thanks to its use of dynamic lighting effects, which is especially noticeable when traveling in these pitch black cave areas, requiring players to either meditate or light a flare just to see where they're going. There's also a few instances where volumetric light shafts are put in place, pouring in through the darkness, and it looks incredible at times. Now, because these two games are both 2D platformers, with the camera being positioned far away from the character and the environment, the shadow quality isn't quite as easy to judge. I mentioned in my last Oddworld comparison that New and Tasty has some great shadow projections at set locations throughout the game. However, the shadows in Soulstorm don't feel quite as baked in, and seem to respond more accurately to the game's ambient lighting and also don't feature that terrible edge flickering that you can observe with the shadows in New and Tasty. But again, the cameras are zoomed out so much on average that this is hardly noticeable. The more interesting changes can be found when looking at the effects. Seeing as Soulstorm was likely built using a lot of the same visual effects from New and Tasty, it makes sense that many effects like the mist from the steam vents or the ragdoll physics applied to all the characters look so similar. But there are a few subtle improvements made in Soulstorm that help to deliver a more consistent image with the smoke feeling denser, and particle density for things like destroyed props or ambient fire embers have been up to noticeable amount. But it's the fire effects that seem to have the best improvements, with flames that can be directly manipulated with the help of the player's new tools. Which brings me to the gameplay portion of this comparison, where I'm going to go over all the new features added to Soulstorm from New and Tasty, while also bringing up the features that seem to have been left behind. For the most part, Soulstorm plays a lot like New and Tasty. The main goal is to reach the end of each level while saving any of your allied Madokan slaves along the way. Players can still walk, run, tiptoe to sneak past enemies, roll on the ground, and jump around. But there's several minor tweaks to all this that helps to make the controls feel tighter and easier to manipulate. Players can now double jump, for example, and change direction in mid-air, which should greatly help players that eagerly jump off a cliff and change their minds at the last second. Additionally, the game's stealth mechanics as a whole have been greatly simplified, making it easier to bypass enemies than ever before. In New and Tasty, the tiptoe feature would only keep Abe quiet while moving across a single surface. Jumping, dropping down, or trying to use things like switches would immediately alert any enemies within earshot. But in Soulstorm, all these actions remain completely silent as long as the player continues to hold the stealth button. And a new HUD indicator shows when the button is being held, keeping players from second-guessing themselves. Another big feature in these 2D Oddworld games is the Meditation and Escort feature. In New and Tasty, players will often find themselves escorting groups of allies through dangerous areas to reach a bird portal that they then need to open by meditating. This same system is in place for Soulstorm, only the AI is capable of doing much more complex actions like jumping, climbing, and even hiding inside of lockers. This requires players to be more mindful of their actions, as any last minute jumps that might be safe for Abe may not be safe for his friends that follow him. The meditating action has also been redesigned, requiring players to now navigate a little glowing cursor whenever they try and use the ability, allowing players to choose what enemy or object they want to manipulate. This also plays a role in the possessing mechanics, as possessed enemies can be chained with a spirit orb cursor reappearing if the possessed enemy is killed, giving players a chance to quickly possess another enemy before it resets entirely. 
When possessing these enemies, players now have a little bit more control over their firearm as well, and can fire their gun in any direction that they like. However, this applies to normal sligs as well, who will now look down over ledges and can shoot upwards if they see the player. Then of course, there's Abe's new backpack. With this backpack, Abe is able to make use of several new tools throughout the course of the game. Early examples of tools include things like water bombs to douse environmental fires, oil bombs that can be used to spread fires, stun mines to temporarily incapacitate sligs, and smoke bombs to make temporary cover. But these items are limited based on a new inventory system, and can be replenished by finding specific pieces of garbage hidden in each level, and then crafting them using a new menu screen. At first, this seemed like it might detract a bit too much from the action, and I do still feel that the menus are a bit clunky at times. But the clever puzzles that come out of these new tools, along with several others that I haven't mentioned for the sake of avoiding spoiling too much, helps to give Soulstorm a fresh and worthwhile new feel. Now, there are a few features from the classic games that don't return. Most notable being the Simon Says communication players were forced to perform in order to get their tribal allies to help them open new paths. Which also means the game's silly, on-demand flatulence is not in Soulstorm. But considering the studio lead himself has stated that he never was a fan of the feature to begin with, this isn't all that surprising, and I think the new mechanics are much more interesting on their own. Finally, let's wrap up this analysis with a brief sound comparison. Which game do you feel has a superior music, audio quality, and overall design? And that wraps up this episode of Direct Comparison. Overall, Soulstorm is a competent follow-up to this hugely underrated classic. It takes all the aspects that worked well in the original game and adds to them, making Soulstorm not just a collection of new levels with flashy visuals, but a worthwhile experience that challenges players with completely unique puzzles to overcome, while simultaneously offering lots of quality of life improvements, like new HUD elements to better translate to the player what they're actually doing. There are a few changes that diehard fans may not be on board with, like the removal of the singing, the less interesting level environments, and the over-reliance on the new backpack crafting features. But it's a clever game all its own, and the fantastic story helps to deliver a truly compelling experience all the way through. But what do you guys think? Are you impressed with Oddworld Soulstorm, or do you prefer New and Tasty? And would you have rather they remade Abe's Exodus like they did with New and Tasty instead? Let me know in the comments section. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this posted every week.